All right, so right now you see I have my, my creature. And I have two layers of it where it's one where it's bent down a little more, one where it's bent down a little less. And so you can play with different poses. The way I posed it, I'll just show that to you again. I would always recommend making a duplicate of your creature layer first because the puppet warp, just like the regular warp tool, does distort a little bit. And if you overdo it, it can get bad. So. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So make a duplicate, Command J, then you go to Edit Puppet Warp. And the reason we talk so much in Assignment 2 about cleaning it up before you brought it over is because this maps that outline of your creature head to toe, fills it with this polygon map. But if I just start moving it now without what's called pinning the articulation points, um, it will just move the whole thing. So if I want to warp it, I have to tell it where I want it to warp from. So think of it like you're putting down dough that you roll out with the warp tool, but you've just cut it out with a cookie cutter. And now you're going to put push pins in the dough to keep certain places where they're supposed to be. And then you can only use the push pins to pull it. <laughs> so if I if I pin it at the legs, that means the legs will stay put unless I move those push pins. If I pin it at the tip of the wings, that means that I can move those push pins at the tip of the wings. But if I don't pin it anywhere else, then it's going to bend the whole body with the wing. And that doesn't match the anatomy. As well as if I also pin it at the elbow of the wing and at the back. And then the wing will be able to move independently. Now it does move the head with it because the head is just pixels. Remember, Photoshop is not this amazing artificial intelligence that can tell I'm making a creature here. It's just giving me control of that grid of pixels. And because the head is on that grid of pixels, if I don't want the head to move, I'd have to pin it. And then I can just move the tip of the wing independent. So this is really good with subtlety of posing. And then you hit return, and then you'll get those different poses. So I have a few different options. I think I like this one that's just kind of hunched over more. It's more dramatic. And then I have my talons. Right? So my talons, I want to pose a little bit differently. And instead of having to recomposite them, I'm going to try to do it with Puppet Warp. So edit Puppet Warp. And now I'm going to pin them here, here, and here. I need it to still connect to the body. I'm not going to move those pins. I'm going to pin the ankles. But then I'm going to move them at the tip of each talon. And that allows me to have a grip onto the ledge of this water tower and into it. But I need to put a pin there for each toe. Make it feel like it's really hanging on for dear life. I can even move part of the talon up, right? So you can always make more pins. Move part of this talon back. Then hit return. So that's a pretty big difference in those talons. Now the reason these talons are there is because I need to erase them from my creature layer. There we go. So little posing can help a lot. Now, how do I really make sure that those interact? Well, I can go back to my burn overlay layer and my dodge overlay layer. And now I can get pretty targeted. I can sharpen up my burn tool a little bit and I can put shadows underneath those talons. And it will burn both the underside of the talon and the background around it. So I'm on my burn overlay layer I'm going to affect the mid-tones, make it smaller, make the hardness a little bit sharper. And do that. Burn the talon itself and the shadow it casts.
burn the talon itself and the shadow it casts. And if I need to, I can even do it to the highlights. Actually, no, just the midtones because we're on that exposure level. So does that help? Yes. Now I can dodge them as well and brighten them up in the, the midtones. Try to help them catch a little light, especially these ones that are stuck in shadow. I need to bring that talon back a little bit. Okay, and if things are getting kind of transparent and not so clear, remember I can always recapture different elements from my combined layer. So if I duplicate, move up, I can individually kind of place that talon because it just looks a little transparent and even individually warp it. So individual compositing matters a lot too. If I wanted to composite in splintered wood, I could do that. And then move it under the overlay layer and it makes it look a lot sharper. Now occasionally you will have to go to the actual layer, like the water tower. You have to do that to play with the saturation of it. And it's not a bad idea to dodge and burn that a little bit as well, because the limitation of the, the overlay layers are that they can only go as much as 50%, because they're on a middle gray, right? And they're pushing it either lighter or darker than 50%. So if you need something more extreme than that, you have to go to the actual base layer, but you have that. Same thing with this talon. I could steal that from my, from my creature, move it up above. Maybe. <laughs> Let's see if there's even anything there. No? Okay. Not really anything there. Let's undo that. I'm in search for a talent, so let me let me find it. So I want to brighten this one up and then duplicate it, make sure it's there. Ah. <coughs> Turn off auto select layer so I can move it. Okay, so there it is. So I want to really brighten that up. So what I can do is I can use adjustments and brighten it and then composite that back on so it shows up in the shadow a little bit more. I can even stretch it out. And I can even go to the water tower. Or I can actually do more extreme dodging where I dodge the shadows on the layer itself. So I'm actually dodging this talon and brightening its shadows. So I remember that from my creature. I had this one talon that was kind of red and dipped in blood, which I thought was cool. But when it's lost in the shadows, then that's not so cool anymore. I can erase those other talons from the background layer that I don't need anymore. And this is aggressive dodging and burning now to help it fit the scene. And then when I turn the water tower back on, it shows up a little bit better. There we go.
1245, please. All right, so there we go. I had to force it up to 53% in order to get those, these talons to see the, the light of day. And now they, they really are powerfully gripping. And I can modulate them with the overlay layers if I feel like it goes too far. So I can burn on them in the right places. All right, so now let's turn on all that texture overlay that I had in the foreground in the background or in front of my creature and see how it all comes together. I'm actually going to just make some artistic decisions now, and I'm going to burn the background directly behind the tail because it looks a little too bright. Just subtleties. All right, but I think I think that's working. Burn the shadows underneath this card a little bit. Okay. Okay, so once once it all kind of comes together, you save it. This is my assignment three PSD. It's got all the components in it, lots of different things, but I'm going to have you save, save it as a JPEG. That's less than five megapixels, but then I'm also going to have you save just a copy of your uh, overlay layers. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're going to say file, save as our JPEG to the desktop, and then a size of 10 makes it under five megabytes. Very good. Now I am going to turn my overlay layers to normal mode. And if you have multiples, just turn the bottom one into normal mode. Right. Then I want you to turn off every layer that's in front of them. Except for any additional texture overlays you might have done. And I want you to set them to 100%. We're not going to save these as your PSD. So by saving this and also uploading this, it shows you all the changes I made to integrate my creature into that setting. Sometimes this is called a burn map, but it's basically the, the shadows and the highlights that I had to add to integrate my creature in, into this setting. So we'll save this as a JPEG. So we're going to say save as, but we're going to call this the burn map or the overlay map. And you'll see those in the past student examples as a JPEG to the desktop and again at a less than five megabytes. Okay, so I have those two things to submit to PhotoBucket using Chrome, using the bookmark I give you in your um, bookmarks bar. It should already be logged in, should remember you. If not, remember to save them to your desktop and let me know and I'll make sure they get submitted. Today's the critique deadline. Because some computers are still having trouble. I want to